Welcome back to the Virtual Antics Podcast. I am your host, Natalie Guzman, and today I have Kathleen Selmans with me, who is a published author and your personal monetization coach. Welcome, Kathleen. How are you? Thanks so much for having me. I'm great. How are you, Natalie? I'm doing fantastic. So tell me a little bit about what you do and how you got started. Yeah, so I've been in the digital marketing space for over a decade, which is a really long time in internet years. Back, back in my day, we were all on .wordpress.com sites. I don't even know if they have those anymore. But I I got into online business through the personal finance space. And over the course of my career, I realized that I really enjoyed helping people monetize more than I enjoyed the content inside personal finance. So I started I pivoted, I, I left the company I was working with and started helping people with their marketing. And the, at that time, and I think we're so much more aware today than we were back, in, back then. But at that time, most of the people I'd worked with sort of backed into their online business and monetized before they even had any idea what how to build a business around it. And so when sponsorship money would come in or affiliate money would come in or or back then when private ads would just approach them through their contact page, that was great, but there was no systematic way to turn audience into money. And that's what I helped people with then. And then I so I had a marketing agency where I was doing all the work for people and realized that I can help a lot more people from the brainstorm and ideation phase where they say, well, I don't know what I would sell. We have, they come to me, we have a brainstorming session. I set them up on a path and then work with them in more of a consulting capacity until they're profitable. That's awesome. So what are some of the things that businesses should have in place before, you know, really focusing on that monetization, like you said? Just sort of a a path to purchase. Know what business you're in, know what you're selling, know what your product is, know who your customer is. So, and that's, that's so, you know, talking to you in 2023, everybody has that, right? Like you don't go online to start blogging and and see where it goes right now. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't have that time don't have the energy to put into it. I'm not going to talk about recipes and, you know, home home organization unless I've got something to sell. So it's it's a different world today, but marketing is still important. Yeah, so true. And it all comes down to that funnel, right? Having the funnel of where I love funnels. I can talk about them all day, but having where you <laughs> have your your social media, which leads to your webpage, which leads to your email list, which, you know, so on and so forth, which then leads to promoting your product. So what um, are some of the ways that entrepreneurs can monetize? Yeah. So one of the things that I see in our space is that usually when you get started, you start with a service. You are a great copywriter or a great social media strategist or whatever it is. And so you do it and you say, you do it for yourself. And then organically, your friends are like, how are you getting, we started on Instagram at the same time. You have 20,000 followers and I have five. How, what's, what are you doing? And so you, you pivot and you think, well, I could do that for you. And then you change your prices when it's no longer your friends and you, you build it up. And let's just keep with the Instagram example. There is a cap to how many you can do. You could say like, yeah, I could manage myself a hundred Instagram accounts, but that's neglecting sleep and eating and socializing, you know, like all of those things. So what I see is an opportunity to turn your, your service into a productized service. So that you're not, you're going from bespoke to temporized. You're creating something different that serves a different segment of your people. So again, with the, we're going to stick with this Instagram example because there are people for whom no amount of teaching will get them to open Instagram. They will, they will all day, every day, you know, put my voice over on, on, a, on, on something. I don't want my face. I don't want this. You could raise your prices 500% and that person will still stay with you. That's not everybody. But you can keep so, but you can keep it in mind when you keep raising your prices and then create a productized offer, right? Like, so now I have six people paying me a ton more than those hundred people 
were paying me. Well, I realized halfway through that it, I couldn't do more than 25 people. So, okay, fine. How can I serve those people that are not the six that are paying me what the 25 were paying me? How can I serve them? So then you think about it and you think, well, on Mondays, I typically post educational content for all my clients. On Tuesday, you know, so then you're thinking, well, I already have this templatized approach. Maybe I could sell templates. And then you notice that there's a huge market for that, right? Like somebody could pay you. I, I just learned about somebody who, who created this for realtors. Coffee and Contracts, I think is the, her Instagram. She's a real estate agent that was great at social media and then started selling a membership that's honestly just basically Canva templates. But if you don't have to think about it and you can create reels that somebody else has put all the strategy into and you just have to swap out their location for yours in with stock imagery i mean she she was able to find that and she's not the only one who's doing it and so it's a it's a neat way thinking about how to productize your service is a neat way to start unlocking the time for money exchange. True. So what are, so I know a lot of times my listeners are always asking what social media channels should I be on? Should I be on multiple? What's your take on that? There's a lot of vanity metrics in social media. So we're using Instagram as an example because it's a really, really straightforward example. Everybody knows what Instagram is. But honestly, if you're going to be on one social media network, and you sell B2B, you got to be on LinkedIn. Yeah. And actually I've been doing a lot of studies on LinkedIn because my, both my businesses, we've been kind of diving into it a lot more. And did you know that you actually have a better chance of going viral on LinkedIn than you do on TikTok? Because only yeah. like less than 10% of people on LinkedIn are creators. And so if you're creating original content, you're actually more likely to go viral on LinkedIn, which I thought was super interesting. Cause I always hear about people going viral on TikTok, not really about LinkedIn. And I think it's definitely like the most unrated, um, underrated social media platform there is. I agree. And it's like, it's, it gets the like dorky older sister vibe, yeah. but you said TikTok. There are people who have millions of followers on TikTok that have not made a dollar. Yeah. There is no, there's no reason to be proud of yourself for having a million followers on TikTok if you haven't figured out how to monetize it. And that is a notoriously hard social media platform to monetize. The, the platform is built for scrolling. You, the only people that are monetizing that attention are the creators and owners of TikTok. You, getting somebody to leave TikTok for any reason whatsoever is really, really hard. You even see where if somebody has like an Instagram link in their account and you, I was, I've, I've, I'm fascinated by this because the attention economy is so interesting to me because you'll see like, okay, this person has 6 million followers on TikTok. How many of them are on Instagram? And you go over there and it's like 30,000, which is not small, but by comparison, you can't even get this. If you're following me on TikTok, I can't even convince you to follow me somewhere else where you know it's going to be the same content anyway. But but with LinkedIn, you can have zero followers today, build your network and and fill your, I have a whole system for how to get better leads on LinkedIn and how to fill your sales calendar with very qualified leads. And your follower account has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's much more of an outreach sales platform and should be treated as such. But even with that, I find it really funny, like carousels do really well on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. but LinkedIn is stodgy. And so in order to get carousels to, to render right on LinkedIn, they have to be uploaded as PDFs. I just think that's adorable. And like, because <laughs> if you upload them as, as, image files, they show up as a collage and you're like, well, that's not it. That's funny. You know, you called it the dorky older sister. And I was like, yeah, but the dorky older sister is reliable. And I think that's what comes down with LinkedIn because when you go on LinkedIn, you are looking to network, you're looking to grow your business and you are looking to connect with like-minded people and maybe even find help. And so if that, that's exactly what we want in a lead, those are all attributions of a really good qualified lead. And that's what people go on LinkedIn for. So I'm like, why, why haven't we done this sooner? Why have we been so focused on the most popular apps instead of where 
our target market is really, you know, is really at and where they're ready to. Cause I feel like on TikTok, we're just trying to clear our mind. We're not trying to grow our business. We're just trying to relax on LinkedIn. We're trying to grow our business. So I I have definitely been looking into like moving all of our content over there. We've seen really cool results and it's just been, it's been crazy. All the connections we've made and how many discovery calls I've gotten just by having normal conversations with people. (laughs) Yep. And it's having a moment too. Like it's the, what I have found because my, my recent pivot was into coaching people, how, how to find more monetization opportunities inside their own business. I needed to find people I that were outside the people that already knew me. And the, the best way for me to do that was to go to LinkedIn because not only are people there to do business, being on LinkedIn means they have more money to spend. They are part of a company that has budgets. They are, they, if they're entrepreneur, they have the, the wherewithal to spend uh, on stuff. And so you're not, you're not bumping into the, the people that are, that, that would love to have your, get your help, but are so far from that in terms of like readiness and awareness and all of that. But to your point, nobody is scrolling LinkedIn right before bed. We're all doing that on TikTok. Yeah. So true. And it's, It's just really cool. Like I had this one person that ended up having a discovery call with, it was really interesting because I just posted, I joined a bunch of groups like they're in my local area because we move every couple of years. And so we're in the midst of moving again. So I was like, why not join the local groups and get my name out there? And I posted just a little bit about me. Someone messaged me and um, we got onto like this long rant about Poquito, which you don't know is a very Puerto Rican like alcoholic drink that's amazing because she named her dog and then it built this beautiful friendship where we've now referred clients to each other multiple times and made a lot of money just from posting a simple post where I could post that same thing on Instagram or TikTok and not have any connections whatsoever and usually any interactions I get on Instagram or TikTok from other people never leave my comment section so they don't go into my DMs or anything like that so I I definitely appreciate LinkedIn and how like it goes straight to your direct messages and it's they might leave a comment but they're more likely to have a one-on-one conversation with you is that what you found as well yeah well that and like if they leave a comment or they engage with you they're opening the door to the DM and so if you're not, if you're not engaging back, if you're not, if you're not looking to see how many people, I, I can get six engagements on a LinkedIn post, which is nothing, but that can lead to three calls on my calendar, which is not nothing, you know, you know, like it's that I, I am, and I love the LinkedIn algorithm. They have said publicly that you should not post on LinkedIn more than once a day because the that means you're competing with yourself, yeah. which is such a breath of fresh air. You go over to Instagram, it's like, yeah, once a day in post, 47 stories, six reels and two lives. And that's in a day, you know, it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> like back to LinkedIn, you know? <laughs> yeah, I really like it. And it's, there's also like some cool things that I just recently found was like the feature sex section on your LinkedIn. So if you, so for me personally, I put all my freebies on there. So I have like a course toolkit, a website toolkit, I have a podcast toolkit and they're all free. And we made cute little images and we put them in the feature section. And I've actually had people who go to my profile are interested on it, click on it. And then now they're on my email list because they got to see the featured section. So I really like, I just discovered that and I was amazed. I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. Don't snooze on the dorky older sister. Yep, exactly. I mean, I'm, I if was the dorky older sister to ask for 20 bucks. We know they're getting it somewhere. Like the LinkedIn has to get the, the LinkedIn algorithm has to give the TikTok algorithm money. Like, yeah, it's just a really cool platform. I really enjoyed it. And then now I did that here that you, that you kind of specialize like with courses. Is that correct as well? I wouldn't say courses. Mostly, usually when I, when I tell somebody that they should productize their service, they immediately think, well, should I use Teachable or Kajabi? It's like, hold on, let's back up. Because it's not just about building a digital course. Depending on your market, it might not be that at all. So I'll give you an example. Someone who was in my mastermind came to me and said, I wanted, I want to sell lead magnets to this, this particular, particular market. I said, okay, this market does not know what a lead magnet is. And we're going to lose time, money, and patience teaching that. So let's figure out a different offer that, that will resonate that because because nobody in this market is saying, gosh, I need a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. That's such a marketing term. And I, you know, I speak marketing, but 
that it wasn't um, the industry wasn't marketing. So we went back and forth and brainstorming is so iterative and so interesting because we take it, we have an idea and then we go sleep on it. And then we're brushing our teeth and we think, Oh, wait a second, this is what I want. And so what she landed on was templated emails. So telling the clients ahead of time that they are templated, that they have, that, that they have pieces that can be, you can customize two pieces. So we'll do a different header and a different like local news section, whatever. They can, they can subscribe to one, two, or four emails a month. Well, that just unlocked the bespoke blog post writer, freelance writer from having to write a unique piece of content here, 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 and here to writing it once and swapping out a paragraph for much more money. And so while that's not a digital product and it's not an online course, it is it is how she has unlocked the passive income piece yeah. where she's making money multiple times for doing the work once. Yeah. And I think that's definitely, I, I think I've read a lot of books where it says the average millionaire has seven streams of passive income. And that could actually, if you set up right with the right automations and emails and things like that, that's a really good revenue for passive income, especially when you get into templates or, you know, DIY products and things like that. And um, yeah, so that's super cool. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Can you tell everyone thank where you. they can find you? You can find me at the wellpaidexpert.com. Oh, I love that name. That's awesome. Perfect. We'll make sure we check you out. I'll put it in the show notes and thanks guys. And thank you so much for coming, Kathleen. I appreciate it. Thanks, Natalie. Bye.